Howdy everyone, welcome back to Hex Hunter. We're coming and bringing to you live another brand new Hexonomics. Today we're going to be covering chests. If you like this kind of stuff for Hex and you want to see more of it, go ahead and hit like and subscribe and follow on all the, the cool stuff down below. Uh, we're going to jump right into a very interesting subject near and dear to everyone's hearts. We're going to take a closer look at chests. Now we've talked about this before, we've talked about a little bit under what gold is being used for, we've talked about it when uh, we're getting into some of the initial starting aspects of Hex, but now we're going to take a little bit of a deeper look at what's going on with chests. So just as a, a quick uh, catch all to get back, if you do not know how to get to where your chests are, they are stored in your inventory, and if you ever want to open up one up from your inventory, all you have to do is double click on your chest, and it will take you to the Wheel of Fate. Now the Wheel of Fate is a very wonderful place because this is where all sorts of goodies come from but there are a few nifty things you need to know. So one is you need to know where your gold amount is and that tells you how much gold you have left. You have your price table to the left and as well as everything that can be dropped into the Wheel of Fate over here to the right. Now this can get a little cluttered so a lot of people miss that there's a little filter button right here that will allow you to limit all the stuff that can be seen. So right now we want to only see chests that are here and we only want to see stuff from Primal Dawn. And so now we will see only the stuff from Primal Dawn and this makes these all be easier to deal with. Now chests themselves actually come from booster packs. And so let's go ahead and we will bring up an Armies of Myth pack here. So whenever you crack open an Armies of Myth pack or any booster pack, uh, in this case, we'll crack open a Primal Dawn pack. You get all of the beautiful cards that are here. Uh, and after you double check and see what the awesome rare is going to be, you get surprised in the end with a chest. Now, each pack that gets opened, whether it's in a tournament or here at the Wheel of Fate screen, has a chest associated. And they can be of one of four rarities when they come from pack. Common, Uncommon, Rare, and Legendary. There is a fifth hidden type of chest, but you can only achieve it through upgrades. Now, we have a common chest here. And what you can do is you can spin a chest for common gold. You can just straight out open it, or you can put it back in your stash. So the stash is what they show over here to the right. So we're going to go ahead and hide our packs again. And so chests come in two forms when they're here. They either have a spin that you can pay for, or they have no spin uh, sometimes you may see a third type called a free spin. So let's go ahead and take a look at a no spin chest. The way you can tell it from all the others, it does not have the center button. All you can do is open it up. And when you open up a chest, it can have quite a few different things. It'll a lot of times have equipment. Sometimes it'll have alternate art cards. It'll have dust to be able to do extended art. But many times you will find a wonderful piece of equipment for hopefully a card that is in your collection. Now these equipment pieces can only be gotten from the chests themselves. You can get them nowhere else in the PvE. Each of the different chests have their own specific loot table associated with them. The only way that you're going to get a Sepulchre Spinneret in this case is from opening Primal Dawn chests. But just opening them is only half the fun. The biggest part when it comes to dealing with chests are the spins. So if you wanted to spin a chest, you would toss one in here and we would go ahead and hit the spin button and so we see that we have the the roulette the table going right here and we see we have three different icons and it tells us that kismet's whims are unknowable and fate grants no reward for us at this time so those icons that we saw they correspond here to this left table but since we did no matching there was no other types for respins we can only just go ahead and open it up and see what is on the inside and many times you'll see a lot of different types of uh, equipment associated with uh, your chests, but the most fun is generally in spinning. Now, we have four rarities of chests, and we saw that spinning a common chest was 1,200 gold. What about an uncommon chest? So we see an uncommon chest is actually 3,100 gold. Now, this is a little bit of a trap, and let me explain why. So when we're dealing with gold, whenever you spin... The spins themselves are equal probabilities no matter what type of chest that you spin. So you have to ask yourself the question, why are there different costs to chests? So let's put this back in our chest because we see that there is a, also a really big jump when you run up to rare chests. 
So we go from 3,100 gold to 8,500 gold. That's a pretty big jump. And if we go from rare to legendary, we see that it's an even bigger jump, costing 30,000 gold to do a spin. So if your chance at any of the particular prizes doesn't seem to explain the cost uh, being increased for chests, then we have to ask ourselves, what is really the cost for chests? And we mentioned a little bit earlier, it is actually the chance at getting primal chests. So let's go back to our common chest. So we have our common chest. We spin it for 1,200 gold. You know, what types of things can we get? Well, if we were trying to get a primal chest, can you get a primal chest from a common chest? No. And the reason is, is because there are three spots for upgrades. You can either upgrade a chest with three of the eyes. You can upgrade a chest with the hands and it will allow you to spin it again or you will have the hearts and that will upgrade it in two tiers so if we hit triple hearts on our chest here it would go from a common chest to a rare chest and you can only upgrade it uh, per roll that you have on the wheel of fate so there's no way that a common chest can actually be spun to get to a legendary or to a primal chest or to a legendary chest, but it can become neither of those. So that kind of explains why this has the lowest spin. If you want the things from the Wheel of Fate itself, but not necessarily what's in the chests, the best way to get those items is not to spin any other rarity of chests because it costs more. You always want to spin your common chests. This is a lot of times why you'll see common chests for each of the different sets selling for platinum. People are spending their platinum to get those chests because they have the gold and they want the things that come from spinning on the Wheel of Fate. So now when we examine an uncommon, we see that it goes up a little bit. Almost a factor of three, but not quite a factor of three. Uh, and this is most likely due to when it upgrades, it's upgrading to a rare chest, which has a better chance at internal loot a better chance at the PvE cards that come inside the chests, uh, a better chance at some of the alternate arts and the like from being inside the chest. And plus you can also double upgrade one of those to a legendary chest, which has a better loot table on top of that. You have a really good chance of getting some of the legendary equipment in legendary chests. So there's a little bit of a cost increase there. But the real jump we see is here in rare chests. This is the first rarity of chests that has an opportunity on the wheel of fate to turn into a primal and the way it turns into a primal is hitting the double upgrade so if you find yourself jonesing to try to get sleeves or something really cool from inside of a primal chest this is the type of chest that you'll want to spend to try to get there in most cases because it's only 8500 gold you have a chance of getting your double upgrade and when you get that double upgrade it's going to jump right up into a primal and you will have a fantastic day now the ones that are more chances on the wheel to actually turn into primals are these legendary chests because to upgrade you can have either the triple eyes, the triple hands, or the triple uh, hearts. So those are three chances on the wheel of fate that if they come up, this will upgrade and you're really paying for, paying for it here in the 30,000 gold. Uh, in many cases, you'll want to save these for the very last chests that you roll if you really, really jonesing for what's inside the primal chest. Now the big reason folks want what's inside the, the primal chest is very specific. The reason you want what's in the primal chest is because that's where the sleeves come from. And the sleeves themselves are exclusive to each of the chests. The chest will have three different types of sleeves per chest type. So it, the ones you have in Primal Dawn are gonna be different than the ones that you'll have for Shards of Fate and so on and so forth. Uh, for each of the sets. So there's 12 total sleeve types that are locked away in these chests split across each of these sets. So we're not just going to uh, do a, a small little exploration. We really want to take a look and let's get some visceral chest rolling here. So, you know, we do our spins and you always want to have some of the really great stuff that comes from here. So like right now, we just got a red double upgrade. So the triple reds will give you a booster pack uh, whenever you see the three red icons and in this case we got an upgrade so we received a primal dawn pack as well as an uncommon upgrade but we lost its ability to actually turn into anything else or to spin again so we open it up 
And this has a slightly different loot table than what a common chest does. Though they're from a shared table, what you can get is different. And in this case, we actually received an alternate art card, the Prestidigitator, a beautiful alternate art. The three for three, two human mage. It's got all of the cool stuff. It's a very beautiful card and it's great to get uh, these types of PVE cards. It may only be an uncommon in the game, but these are going to be great in someone's tournament decks if we find a good use for the Prestidigitator. And so we rolled a common. Why don't we go ahead and roll an uncommon now and see if we can find something cool from the Wheel of Fate. Now, ideally, we can also get something very awesome like this. So we got two eyes and there were two gold symbols. Gold symbols give you gold. One symbol gives you 500, two symbols give you 2,500, three symbols gives you 5,000 gold. You also get a dust depending on which one you get as well. And since we got two eyes, we also got a free spin out of this. So this one was a net positive for us. Now, we won't always be so lucky, but if we're just wanting to see what kind of stuff we have coming in, this is one way. And so we take a look. In the end, we ended up nearly recouping the entire cost of this one, getting an uncommon dust, getting a common dust, and overall, not too bad. So we can go ahead and open this up. This really wasn't the greatest value for trying to figure out if we wanted to get something like a uh, anything from the Wheel of Fate specifically, but this is kind of what you would see with the uncommon chest. You can't really upgrade too high. It's not quite as efficient as rolling a common chest to get the stuff from the Wheel of Fate. And even though we got 3,000 gold from the wheel, we technically had to spend 3,100 to start the process. At least if we had gotten these same rolls on a common chest, we would have been in a net positive if we had done it on common. And that's why you'll have a lot of folks who will say you should only roll common chests. What I would advocate here is that roll your common chests first. When you have run out of all of your commons and you don't want to get any more commons, then you can roll your uncommons. But they should be one of the later things you roll because you have no chance of really upgrading those. Maybe once you're into trying to get the equipment, uh, once you're focusing not on necessarily completing uh, all of the collections themselves, if you just want to see what's inside of them, if you have just a ton of extra gold lying around, that's when you can spin your common chest. Now rares, rares even though they cost more, when you are wanting to start trying to go for your primal chests, this is where you would start. And it costs 8,500, it's a steep price. You're talking at least a couple runs through on uh, PVE to try to even be able to, to spin these, especially like through the arena. This could be anywhere from uh, two to three runs through arena depending on how progressed you are on it. And as you see, even though we hit a gold icon here, we are still down 8,000 gold. The common dust, if we were purchasing it for retail, seems to make that better. But if we were to sell it on the auction house, we'd get significantly less for it. So this is kind of like a consolation prize for not actually upgrading to a primal. Now the bright side is, is that now we have no reservations in opening our rare chest, and we might get something really fun from it. But we see here, we just have the cool bracelets. Uh, they remind me a little bit of snap bracelets from back in the day. But in the end, we got another piece of equipment, something that we hadn't seen in any of our common chests so far. Now, when we're really wanting to try and make the most of it, when you're really wanting to go for a, uh, a primal chest, you're like, I can taste those upgrades. It, this could be the time you could spin one of the legendary chests. Now, we are going to spin one of these, even though... We're not super focused on getting into primal chests yet. We're going to go ahead and roll one of these so that you can see what's inside one of these legendary chests. So we see here, we just spent 30,000 gold and we got nothing. This happens so many times that people viscerally feel how much time they spent on gold and they just don't want to do it. It's just so much gold. You have to have a lot of it built up to be very blase about spending this. And at most we got was one red heart, nothing else, and we just spent 30,000 gold. Think of how much, how many common chests we could have just spun with that 30,000 gold. We could have run through almost all of our common chests and had maybe 20, 25 chances at something even cooler on the wheel. But you know what? We did it, it's done. Let's go ahead and see what's inside of it.
So what we see we have here, we have our first PvE card, the Fury Bringer. The chance of these PvE cards coming up in Legendary Chests is really high. And it's a really fun troop, and it also has some really fun equipment. And for the equipment, we also ended up getting the Recycling Center. It gives us a look at a new PvE card we haven't necessarily seen before, the Scrapyard Recyclotron, most likely another card coming from this selection of Primal Dawn cards. So we have a really fun equipment, a really cool PvE card that we'll be able to use in an Orc deck in the future. And we are down 30,000 gold for that. But that's okay, because we still have all of the beautiful car, beautiful chest rolls that we can do here and see if we can make fun spins like those work. Now, upgrading to the primal chest or getting triple stars is also really awesome. <laughs> uh, we actually just had happen one of the reasons why you really love spinning on uh, the common chest, because whenever you hit triple golds, you get this great payoff of 5,000 gold. And then also, whenever you hit the triple icons for several types, such as the triple stars, the triple moons, the triple mushrooms, and the triple skulls, you actually get elevated rewards. So Finis Plith, which is a mercenary token, is only available if you hit triple stars and triple gold. So not in this case, we get the super, super rare mercenary, 5,000 gold, as well as a rare stardust. And those kinds of spins are super awesome. And at that point, once you actually open the chest, it's the bonus gift uh, that you get for participating on the Wheel of Fate. In this case, we got something like a Titan's Jar, which will be super fun for our Titans of Octar. So, as you can tell, when we spun the Primal Dawn chest, even though we spent a lot more gold, we didn't get any goodies out of the Wheel of Fate, but we spun the common chest, even the uncommon chest, and we were able to get gold, we got better matches, and it's because the matches between those are the same. Your chance of getting any of the triple icons is going to be equal no matter the chest level. But the reason you pay more to spin those higher rarity of chests is because you have a better shot at getting to a primal. And that's one of the biggest focuses here. Primals are going to be highly salt and you can even find them on the auction house sometimes going anywhere from 1500 to 2000 platinum. And that's because a lot of time, effort, and energy is spent into accumulating gold running things on the auction house to get that material, and then coming in and spinning all of these chests. So I hope everyone has enjoyed taking a look at chests. These are the primary focuses on what chests will do. Uh, remember, if you're wanting to get the fun stuff from Wheel of Fate, to focus in on those common chests, and you'll most likely get the most value out of those. And if you happen to already have everything from the Wheel of Fate already, be sure to list those common chests on the auction house because a lot of folks would like to make sure that they can put their gold into the most advantageous way possible and there will always be a good market for common chests from your booster packs. So we're about to enter into the Q&A. Thank you for spending your time with us. Uh, if you liked what you saw today and you'd like to see more, go ahead and hit like and subscribe and follow down on the doobly-doo stuff below. And let's go ahead and take a look at some Q&A before we run on and do some Dino Island for the evening.